Hmm. It costs common nothing to make the light and come close. Mike, I was listening to Come Close. I love Come Close. I, love I was come listening close. to Come Close the other day while I was kill- cleaning the kitchen. I was like, run that shit back. I was in the kitchen watching dishes upstairs. And I was like, run that shit back. That's, That's a beautiful record. You know, yeah. I want to clear, speaking of common, man, I want to clear up some something from last episode, too. And I know some people or somebody in the chat that thought we were just dissing Chicago. We want. I, I just love want. I want to be. You know, I love Chicago, man. Shout love out to Mary. Shout out to Billa, man. Chicago, you know, is a big part of our base too. I'm about to say we I'm got saying, a big following in Chi Town. Yeah, this yeah. is my thing, and, and I was just being honest about, you know, the music that Common makes, and what I see when it comes to, I don't want to say social activism, but just politics, right? It feels like, to me, it feels like hip-hop is very vocal on uh, politics and whatever's going on in the community when Republicans are in office. But when the Democrats are in office, it seems Mm -hmm. like everybody shuts up. And it's like, nobody's talking about the food shortages. Nobody's talking about the baby formula shortages. Nobody's sitting here talking about what the gas prices are. But, you know, I mean, in... All I'm saying is I just don't see that same energy and it makes it tough to listen to certain artists who not only don't give that same energy, but you're out here actively campaigning for people who who are responsible for a lot of this stuff. And, you know, in more of a direct correlation, I think of songs like song for, a song for Asada, right? Off Ooh. of... I knew you were going there. Off of uh, <laughs> Like Water for Chocolate. It hurts, man. It hurts when, you know, you it make hurts. such a beautiful record like that, you know, about Tupac's aunt, you know, and her asylum and everything that's going on with her in Cuba. But yet, at the same time, you're out here skinning and grinning with the people who made her the, elevated her status to being the most wanted woman in America. And it makes me feel like, okay, explain some of this. Explain what. Do you still feel the same way you said in the record about Asada? I don't understand. So it's like when things aren't addressed, and we're going to talk about this with Kendrick too, it just makes it tough to follow musically where people are going uh, when it comes to, I guess you would say, like the social conscious MC. Because we're quick to call out the gangster rapper when they're studio thugs and when they're not keeping it real or whatever. But when somebody who is supposed to be conscious is not living by the things that they're saying in those conscious records, we say nothing. Keep It Real goes all the way around. And all I was saying in the last episode was when it comes into those things get addressed, either musically or in an interview, it's tough for me to listen to those same old messages from artists who are sitting in positions with people that are in position, help getting them in position and doing nothing. I can't do it. So, with all of that being said, let's unpack a couple things. First yeah. of all, you need to state your political affiliation right now. Who, me? Yeah. I'm, I'm black. independent. I have no political affiliation. How could right. I? No, where no, do you, no, where do you sign up for that, that stuff? People understand where we're from because I know that you don't have a political like, affiliation. Like, what's that you I know I'm independent. So Mike and I are not Democrat or Republican. All we see is the fuckery. <laughs> it's like, right. what set you claim? Like, what, what was right. there ever a time yeah, with somebody? Like, we don't have no sets. Like, we, we throwing up gang signs from the independent sidelines. Mike literally has no political affiliation. I am literally registered as an independent. I don't belong to the Democrats or the Republican because. Oh, Leroy oh, Green said right something quick? I want to address real quick. Hold that thought. He said Common can't fix Chicago by himself. I'm not asking him to fix anything. Just speak on the bullshit equally. That's all I'm saying. That's all he's saying. First of all, the reason that I'm independent and part of the reason why you're free of thought and free of all this, well, quite frankly, if me and Mike want to deal with some hustlers and some pimps and some gangsters, we would still be rappers, but we would just go to our respective family reunions. So fuck all of that. Now, as far as this issue is concerned, what we have is we have black men who are not versed in the political arena, in the nuances of the political arena, really, the way that they should be. And they find themselves biting off more that they can chew at the detriment of their credibility 
in their career. And that's yeah. really what Mike is speaking to. Is he's speaking to a man biting off more than he can chew because you are not prepared to swim in these waters. You think that because you are from the streets of Chicago that you are ready to deal with these antiquated, misogynistic, sometimes homosexual, bipartisan, always tied to the money and racism, institutionalized as white people. It's not a good way to align yourself. Mm -hmm. And so what Mike is speaking to is the misalignment, not even by political party or affiliation. Also too, Mike is also making very astute observations. These niggas only pop up with problems when Republicans is in office. While white folks focus in on dog and yoga, my people on the low end trying to ball and get over. Yeah, Bush he's saying, that, he's saying that no, he was saying that in an election year. Mm -hmm. He was saying that in an election year, and so people need to pay attention about how. I hate to say this. Oh, we can still be bought because our economic inequality. Like I read a meme the other day, Mike, where it's like, and I've done mortgage loans before, so I know this is real. When white people are in their early 20s sometimes, and they're ready to buy a house, they often have family members that have fifty dollars to $100,000 already saved up to gift them to buy a house. It is a type of economic uh, inequality that keeps us from having some things. Those economic inequalities, they happen on every level, even at the highest level. Listen to comment on B. What does he say on they say? I be, I be doing something, something when paper get low. Little calm. I make righteous bitches get low. You remember when he said yeah. that? Like as in for money, I'll sit up there and make the intelligent bitches shake their ass and believe whatever they got to believe for it. He's saying that on beat. He even made a joke about little calm. I make righteous bitches get low. The richest nigga ain't necessarily the nigga with dough, but he's still playing those games if you're mm -hmm. reading between the lines. And so economics in this sphere still matter and the economic inequality that we are faced with still makes men, even in Commons economic position, do bad things. But it's and interesting they, though, and again, this is making. one of the things that- It's very poor decision making. I'm not gonna of, call him a sellout. One, he's my one, one of the things is probably- poor decision making going on. Yeah, one of the things that's problematic though is the fact that you know with his disc record at Q back in the day, that was the angle he took, the hypocrisy, right? Uh, I told you, you slinging St. Ives and bean pies in the same sentence. It's with, the coldest diss ever. It is, but it's funny how it came back and could, and somebody could turn that table on him. It's, uh, but again, if we're going to hold Cube to that standard, and he held Cube to that standard as a fan, why shouldn't I do the same thing? Can I unpack something that you... Do you mind if I unpack something briefly that you bought up? No, no, go ahead. These conscious rappers are more phony than the gangster rappers. Most of these dudes that are talking about some of their stuff have lived some sort of semblance of the lifestyle that, that, we're, that they're talking about. I've well, I mean, listen, told Jay tells you who he is from the jump, and you can say whatever you want about Jay. Jay tells you he a hustler, he gonna do this, he gonna get his bread, so you don't be surprised by anything he does. He's up front. How many times have I come up here and I've been like, well, he's a hustler, homie, and he told you so. Yeah. How many times have I come up here and been like, well, I like Pusha T because at least I know Pusha T's rapping about shit that actually happened to him. Have you heard Brambleton lately? Maybe let the smoker shine the coop. Mike, you know what I was thinking about when you said let the smoker shine the coop should start off the album? I said it doesn't because then he can't use the bar. If I, if I never sold dope for you, then you're 95% of who? I always told you about how Hell Half No Fury started off where he was like a oh, 411 Cuban helped us weather the storm. I said, that's the, I said, no, I said, that's that real gangster. Talk. I said, hold on. I was like, stop, pause. I said, no, 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 niggas, it's really in this life. Talk that way. Like, it's easy for a nigga to be like, I went up on my block. I cop some work. I sold a brick. It's like, yeah, 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 nigga. I know when you talk a 411 Cuban helped us weather the storm. It's like, oh, this shit, these niggas about to get indicted. Somebody going to jail. Mike, and what happened a few years later? Everybody got indicted except for them and went to jail. Give me those niggas. Because they oh, oh, all they talk about is selling dope. They did, it's like, well, no, nigga, they did that shit. So what about this conscious ass rapper that you can't rely on to make a classic album? Um, Jay Electronica. 
Yo, Most Joshua Stone. Talib Kweli, Black Thought. How many classic rap albums are they giving you of their truth? Because their truth might be like more conscious and you might be more like noteworthy. Give me that nigga on Hell Hath No Fury. You know, somebody uh, in the chat said something that I'll address. Wham, wham. Uh, somebody said something in the chat I'll address. I, I usually don't like addressing anything. It's not super chat, so maybe a trolling. But he said that uh, Mike voted for Kanye, so I can't take him serious. Well, first off, I did not vote for Kanye. And second off, I think that that's everyone's problem in the first place. You don't listen to the words that are being said. You're so caught up in what you think somebody's doing or this affiliation and that, and you let that make you throw everything out the way. Am I saying something that's incorrect? Analyze what I'm saying, not what you think that I've done or whatever, whatever. Am no, I saying I think, something that's incorrect? No, you're right. Like, I mean, I, No, I just know this because a lot of people have come up in here since we started this, and they'd be like, oh, well, y'all like the cocaine rappers and like all the dope boys. It's like, no, that nigga Conway really got like hit up and all with, almost murdered, though. Like, what about like your conscious rapper that's sitting up here telling you that he's living righteous, but he got fucking four baby mamas and ain't never been married, but he's telling you you need to do the right thing by your girl. You feel me? <laughs> you feel me? It's like, no, no, no. Give me that nigga that got shot and is looking for the niggas that shot him. I know that nigga. I can trust that guy. It's like, oh, somebody hit you up. You looking for the niggas who did it? You should be. I trust that. <laughs> Okay, well, on that note, man, what did you think about um, this crown that Kendrick Lamar oh, just, was wearing? Just real quick, before we get to, to our false prophet of the day, oh, I want to give Lupe <clears throat> uh, the same rating you actually gave. I thought this was a 4.25. I thought it was an album of the year contender. I thought the production suffered at some moments where it could have been highlighted more, like Kiosk that I love. I, I want to say something special about Lupe, too, because I wrote down this bar as soon as I wrote it. Whenever you're saying stuff like this, you're special. Because he's saying it on the first song, the Gotti song, uh, when he's talking about, you decide, or apple pies and fries that come with the snake. He's talking about how the fast food mm -hmm. in the hospital community are intertwined to kill the black person. That's how he's starting off his album. He's literally talking about the, the hospital staff that actually has a snake in it because it re actually represents something demonic, which is why you shouldn't totally trust hospitals. He literally breaks that down to start off his album. This is what I'm trying heavy. to say. It's heavy. Mike, I know this and you know this. Not only are we heads, but we're also intelligent guys and thinkers and free thinkers and well-versed. That connects with you and me and very few of other people outside of that realm. When he said that, I said, niggas ain't even going to catch this. Yeah. And I think you Lupe decide, is good with that. You, you know what I mean? Or apple pies and fries come with the snake. He's talking about McDonald's. He's talking about your medical help and how fast food is killing you. He's talking about the whole breakdown of the hospital organization in two bars. And unless you're versed on all these things, you're literally going to miss all his greatness. But here's mm. what I know that you can understand. I was a fiend... Before I became a teen, I melted <laughs> microphones instead of cones of ice cream. Music orientated, so when hip hop was originated, fitted like pieces of puzzles. What is it, Mike? Complicated. Okay. The goat. And 